Good evening and welcome to the Carnegie Town Hall. This meeting of the City Planning Commission will begin with a few introductory remarks. The City of Sioux Falls Planning Commission serves as an advisory board to the City Council. It is the responsibility of the Planning Commission to consider and make recommendations on land use and zoning matters. Actions taken tonight on conditional use permits are final, unless appealed to the City Council in writing within five days. And any actions taken tonight on final development plans, design review, or minor amendments are final. Any recommendations made on preliminary subdivision plan requests tonight will be referred to the City Council for final action at the third council meeting of this month or at the first council meeting of next month if associated with a rezoning or major amendment. Any recommendations made on zoning requests, major amendments, future land use amendments, or ordinance amendments tonight will be referred to the City Council for final action at the first council meeting of next month. Council meetings are held at 7 p.m. here in the Carnegie Town Hall and are televised. The Planning Commission will first approve the consent agenda and then the regular agenda. In order to place certain non-controversial items on the Commission's consent agenda, planning staff in the Planning Commission apply the following criteria. First, the request conforms with the Shape Sioux Falls 2035 Comprehensive Plan. Second, planning staff recommends approval of the request. Third, there are no audience members present or written comments received in opposition to the request. And fourth, the application meets all conditions and requirements of the Sioux Falls Zoning Ordinance. For the regular agenda, the following normal public hearing procedure will be followed for each item. By first requesting planning staff to present a brief report on that item. Second, the petitioner or representative will be requested to come forward to make a statement or answer questions. After the petitioner has spoken, anyone from the audience who wishes to address the agenda item shall be recognized. Then the Planning Commission will discuss the matter further and take appropriate action. We ask that anyone addressing the Planning Commission move to the podium microphone, identify themselves for the record. Please limit your comments to less than five minutes. As a courtesy to everyone here tonight, we ask you that you please either turn off or silence your electronic devices. This meeting is being televised on Channel 16 and will be rebroadcast Saturday at 10 a.m., Tuesday at 7 p.m., and Wednesday at 1 o'clock a.m. Thank you for your cooperation. Good evening and welcome to Carnegie, Carnegie Town Hall. I call this order, I call to order this regular meeting of the City Planning Commission We'll begin with a few introductory remarks. The City of Sioux Falls Planning Commission serves as an advisory board to the City Council on land use and zoning matters. Actions taken tonight on rezoning request, major amendments, future land use amendments, and ordinance amendments will be referred to the City Council for a public hearing on Tuesday, September 6th at 7 p.m. in the Carnegie Town Hall. Action taken on preliminary subdivision plans will be referred to the City Council for action on Monday, August 15th, unless associated with a zoning request, which then would be heard by the City Council on Tuesday, September 6th. Action taken tonight on conditional use permits is final unless appealed to the City Council. And any action taken tonight on final development plans or minor amendments is final. At this time, the Planning Commission will approve the consent and regular agenda. In order to place not certain non-controversial items on the Commission's consent agenda, standing, pla standing planning staff in the Planning Commission applies the following criteria. First, the request conforms to the Shape Sioux Falls 2035 Comprehensive Plan. Second, planning staff recommends approval of the request. Third, there are no audience members present or written comments received in opposition to the request. Fourth, the application meets all conditions and requirements of the ordinance. 
The consent agenda items are, number one, would be approval of the July 6, 2011 meetings, minutes of the regular meeting. Two, plats. Three, would be a rezone from the RS2 residential district to the RC Recreation <coughs> Conservation District for allowed uses at East 26th Street and South Canyon Avenue. Four, Rezone from the I-1 light industrial, the C-4 planned commercial, and the RA-2 residential districts to the I-1 light industrial, the C-4 planned commercial, and the RA-2 residential districts for allowed uses at South Grange Avenue and West Village Drive. Five. Rezone from the RA1 residential and O office districts to the RS2 residential and RC recreation conservation districts for allowed land uses at the northwest corner of West Benson Road and North Marion Road. Six, rezone from the RS2 residential district and the RA1 residential district to the RD residential district for allowed land uses at West Madison Street and North Valley View Road. Seven, major amendment to sub area A of the Celebrate Community Church Plan Development District to add a retail coffee shop as an accessory use to the allowed uses at 1000 South Sycamore Avenue. Eight, Conditional use permit in the C4 planned commercial district to allow a parking lot expansion at West 59th Street and South Louise Avenue. Nine, a conditional use permit in the RD residential district to construct a four unit townhome at East 45th Street and South Outfield Avenue. 10, a minor amendment to sub area C Westwood Valley Plan Development District to reduce front and rear yard minimum required setbacks from 25 feet to 20, to 20 feet at West 32nd Street and South Norma Trail. 11, preliminary subdivision plan for the Williams addition in the I-1 Light Industrial District, the C-4 Plan Commercial District, in the RA2 Residential District for a multi-use development at South Grange and West Village Drive. Staff, would there be uh, any additions or subtract? Yeah, staff would request that we move items 7 and 10 to the regular agenda for public concern. Number 7 and number 10 to the regular agenda? Yep. Are there any objections from the audience to any item listed on the consent agenda? Are there any objections from the planning commission members to any items listed on the consent agenda? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion for acceptance of uh, the consent and regular agenda. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion for approval of the consent agenda, moving items 7 and 10 to the regular agenda. Would there be a second? Got a motion and a second. All in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. I would ask all the commission members, I have been advised that they've been having a little audio problems with the system. So if and when you care to speak, they've requested that we get close to the mic microphone. Uh, with 7 and 10, we will go with 7 and 10. Uh, I will chair 7. I will stand down for item number 10. Meredith Larson will take my, my position for number 10. And uh, I'll then come back for 12. Let's start with number seven. Need to approve the regular. Number seven is a major amendment to sub area A of the Celebrate.
Community Church Plan Development District to add a retail coffee shop as an accessory use to the allowed uses at 1000 South South Sycamore Avenue. Oh, I've just been informed we also need a motion to approve the regular agenda. The staff has one comment on the regular agenda. We received a request to uh, defer item number 12 to the September Planning Commission meeting. Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion to approve the regular agenda with items 7 and 10 added and item 12 deferred. There I'll be a second, second that. We've got a motion uh, and a second. All in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. You already read it in, so I will just go ahead. Um, my name is Dave Loveland, and I'll be representing planning staff on this and uh, later items on tonight's meeting. Item number se seven is uh, petition number 2011-07-13. The request is for a major amendment to subarea A of the Celebrate Community Church Plan Development District in order to add retail, trade, and service as an accessory use to the permitted land uses. The applicant's requesting this in order to open a coffee shop within the church that would be open to the general public during business hours. This coffee shop would also entail a drive-through, which is what's triggering the change. Um, the area of the site in question is 7.8 acres and it's located at 1000 South Sycamore Avenue. Um, as far as the abutting zoning and land uses to the north, south, east, and west is generally residential and all of those have been assigned compatibility ratings of four, which means that they are generally compatible with, with potential minor incompatibilities. Uh, just to give you a quick history, the Celebrate Community Church Plan Development District was created by a city council action in May of 2004 in order to allow a church and accessory uses. Approval for the building expansion was also completed in July of 2009. And this uh, building, if you remember, was formerly the site of the Sioux Falls Christian High School. Um, the proposed regulations have been noted inside your staff reports. Um, the major change to that is that um, we would be adding under uses permitted item G, which is retail trade and service as an accessory use. And so that's written that way in order to ensure that any retail would be secondary to the main purpose of the church. Um, as I noted, the location is at 1000 South Sycamore. Uh, the, and as far as uh, Public agencies and infrastructure comments from traffic engineering, no changes to access points on Sycamore will be approved for this use. So they just wanted to let them know that there would be no access changes on Sycamore Avenue. Uh, the proposed coffee shop will be located in the interior of the existing church structure and while open to the general public will not produce much if any additional impact to surrounding properties. Um, and so because of that, the, we are, because the subject application should not negatively impact surrounding properties and any additional changes would require public hearings before the Planning Commission and City Council, we are recommending approval of the major amendment with the subway regulations as noted in your staff reports. We did receive one letter from a concerned neighbor, um, primarily his concerns, I'm not sure if he's in the audience or not, uh, his concerns were along the matters of traffic um, impacts and then uh, snow plowing and then he was also concerned with the expansion of a potentially commercial use um, and that concludes staff report I can take any questions would there be any questions of staff Dave would this uh, major amendment allow for I know they're they're asking to put a basically a we don't have a plan of what it's going to look like or anything like that to put a coffee shop onto this, um, would it allow for other additional retail trade to be built on this site because it is so large? Yes, as an accessory use, it would be. But so they wouldn't. It wouldn't be in a separate building. It would be accessory to the church. So something like a bookstore or things like that. A lot of times when you see you know a larger church campus, that's kind of those uses that you'd be looking at. So, okay, and and I'll just note again that. A coffee shop, what's triggering this one is that it's a drive-through uh, window. If it were just a coffee shop located in the interior of the church, it would, it would be allowed as it, as it stands since it's just an accessory use. You see those in many of the churches around the community already. So. Can you tell us where the drive-through would be? I, I, I'd have to defer to the applicant on that one. I didn't see a plan for that. So. Any other questions of staff at this time? 
Thank you, David. You Thank may you. sit down. Before I uh, ask the petition, petition, petitioner to come up, I should say, if your item was on the consent agenda, other than items uh, 7 and 10, uh, those have been approved, and those that were here for that, those particular ones are free to leave at this time. But I forgot to say that. Uh, is the petitioner here on number 7? Hello, my name is Brent Norgard. I am on, I live here in Sioux Falls. I'm on staff at Celebrate and um, created the petition here to add a coffee shop. We, we uh, actually have a coffee shop in the church right now. We've had a coffee shop there since about 2005, and it's just used internally right now on the weekends and our Wednesday night, uh, Wednesday night services. Um, what we want to do is expand that so we can have our, our primarily our congregation come and use that throughout the week. And... Uh, so we, we just, we're going to expand the hours and some of the equipment inside of that to, to just allow some, some heavier use of that. But uh, um, we're going to open that up for, uh, for a coffee. And, yes, we want to have a drive-through um, for people just to catch that on the, way, on the way to work or something. And the drive-through actually will be on the west side of the property. Um, if you can see, I don't have a pointer here or anything, but on the, uh, there is a circle drive off of Sycamore right there. It is circling, and the drive-through will be in that area. Uh, the the, uh, the letter that we did receive was from from a gen gentleman on Suburban Drive, uh, behind or to the east of the property, and I, I don't see this uh, that that uh, drive through affecting traffic near his area. So uh, he's actually uh, back uh, to the east of the property. Would there be any questions for uh, Brent? If there be, if there is no questions, you may be seated. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this particular matter? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion from uh, the commission. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve. Would there be a second? Second. This would then be our time for discussion in regards to this matter. I guess I have some concerns about the precedents that we're setting for any other churches in the in the city to do this. And as far as traffic backing up onto Sycamore, um, if there is an, a line to get their coffee, um, could that become an issue? So that would be my concern. Does anyone else have any concerns? Seeing none, I would uh, I would ask for a vote. All in favor of uh, item number seven will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed. Yes. Motion passes. I uh, will now go to item number ten. Take my spot. Good evening, Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Steve Randall. I'll be representing planning staff and other on this item and others this evening. Uh, this applicant I, or application item number ten on the agenda tonight. Petition number 2011-0708 is a request for a minor amendment to uh, sub-area in Westwood Valley Plan Development District. It's a seven and a half acre site. The purpose is to reduce front and rear yard setbacks from what is currently required. Um, and the current land use is uh, vacant. All of this uh, property surrounding the subject property is in a Westwood Valley uh, plan development district and as such we've given it a compatibility rating of five because the plan has been approved through the Planning Commission and the City Council and final development plans approved for the subject property. That is to say <clears throat> the proposed use uh, with the uh, 
exhibit that's provided in your information packet is identical to pre-existing zoning districts and uses that were previously approved. Westwood Valley was zoned plan development in December 2003 to allow development of residential, office, institutional, commercial, and recreational uses. Uh, since then, there have been five final development plans approved in this, in this plan development district, including multifamily uses as RA1 on the subject property. This final development plan for lots 3 to 15 and 18 and 19 block 9 Westwood Valley Edition was for the purpose of constructing multifamily residential buildings and it was approved with stipulations on September 3rd, 2009. The one stipulation restricted the use of ash trees for required tree planting. The standards we're looking at is RA1, residential district for setbacks, density and so on. Located on the west side of West Norma Trail, on the east of side of the west side transportation quarter and south of West 26th Street. Uh, since the final development plan was approved with landscaping, buffers, and so on against the parkway, the parkway has been reduced in scale uh, to a collector street. At one time it was more of a highway classification, four lanes with a median. Uh, now it has been reduced to a collector and allowed accessibility to adjacent lots. So direct access from Norma Trail on the east side and direct access from the parkway on the west side is allowed. Access uh, points are allowed but shall be considered again on the final development plan. They will have to come back for final development plan approval on this. We're just looking at the setback requirements. There is a future school and park site planned west of the parkway, but it hasn't been uh, located yet. Proposed development lots are not dimensioned on the plan, but uh, front and rear yard minimum setbacks of 20 feet are indicated. Parking is double car garages attached for residential use, four units attached. Building location and design indicate uh, center location on each lot facing the street. A landscaping plan is not indicated and will be treated with the final development plan application when it comes in. 20 feet is an adequate front yard setback in a planned development on a collector street. However, required parking is not allowed in the required front yard setback. And staff notes that the proposed location and number of driveways onto the parkway will prevent on-street parking. The applicant previously proposed to replat the subject property for the development of lots with fourplexes and two lots with three fourplex buildings on each lot for a total of 20 units at a density of 2.7 units per acre. You see on the exhibit in front of you the plan approved in 2009 showing multiple buildings on one lot and then separate buildings on separate lots for a total of 20 units. The proposed development now um, is actually has less density along uh, the interior of the of the uh, layout than it does uh, on the previous approved plan so traffic impacts actually should be less but the density is increased because accessibility is increased and we've increased from 20 to 32 units at a density of 4.3 units per acre Because the subject application requires a final development plan application to the Planning Commission for review of site development plan and building design, and 20 feet is an adequate setback for townhomes on a parkway, staff recommends approval of the minor amendment. Staff has had a couple calls on this concerned about <coughs> density and traffic in the neighborhood, and therefore it's on the regular agenda tonight. And that concludes staff report. Thank you, Steve. Any questions for Steve? Okay, thank you, Steve. Is the petitioner here this evening? <coughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Damian Grebel. I'm with Earhart Griffin and Associates, 300 North Dakota Avenue, Suite 114, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57104. And I'm representing the petitioner here tonight. Um, 
as uh, Mr. Randall stated in staff report, and I'd just like to state again, uh, this portion of property was established as a PD uh, zone in 2003. And within that uh, plan development district, there's a sub area that allowed this type of development. Um, in 2003, that uh, zone would have been established through Planning Commission, City Council, and as part of public record. Um, again, as development took place in the subdivision in 2009, there was another public hearing on this zone which established uh, not only the use but the layout of, of the property. So in 2009, um, what came before Planning Commission again was a layout for a final development plan. Um, the final development plan, if you can see that, I, I see a, on the west side, at that time, the west side corridor, there was a berm planned, there were trees planned, um, buffering the west side corridor. There were also trees shown along uh, West Norma Trail. So this is a final development plan that was brought before Planning Commission um, that showed the use of the property that had already been established per zoning. This was in 2009, made public record at that time as well. Um, there was also a separate, separate final development plan uh, at the intersection of 32nd and uh, Norma for the same basic use, uh, multifamily uh, uses as well. That would have been brought before Planning Commission, part of public record. Um, again, that brings us here today. Uh, as Mr. Randall stated, there's been some changes on the city's uh, traffic west side corridor. Uh, that corridor is no longer going on the west side of this property. So the anticipated right of way uh, that was needed on the west side, uh, the amount is reduced. Um, so that being said, it allows this area of property to be developed uh, with our, uh, what we're asking for is our change in front and rear setbacks. Uh, as Mr. Randall said, the, the density of the property, the density onto Norma Trail should be less dense. The traffic, since we will have both access on Norma Trail and to the west um, side of this property, this area is 7.1 acres, and uh, using the minimum density of the RA1 zone would allow for a uh, 121 units to be developed. And as you can see, we're nowhere close to that, so we're well below the, uh, the proposed, the allowed density on this property. Uh, city staff has already stated that um, the compatibility rating for this project, for this request, is a five, which means it's the most compatible for the surrounding uses. And in that, uh, that kind of concludes what I have to say, and I would be more than happy to entertain any questions that you may have. Thank you, Damian. Any questions for Damian? I guess not. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else in the audience this evening that would like to address item number 10? Evening. My name is Doug Bleeker. I live on West Norma Trail. We bought it in the end of October of 2009. We are led to believe it was a residential neighborhood. It's quiet. I actually have a, a print of nothing like that that was given out, and this is how 12 homes are going to be built on the west side of the road. There already have been a condo, condo built on the west side. Mm -hmm. I have a question to that. Is that condominium currently to standard? Is that with the five-foot five, five foot setback already involved? Well, we're not here tonight well, to I, that's, deal with... Well, that Something was a question I have because already happened. We really have to focus on this particular well, request this evening. So. I was told it was built to current city standards. I assume so because that I don't believe we've had anything related to uh, a change in the setbacks prior to this for this particular de development. You increase the density of home in that area, traffic will increase. Mm -hmm. If you take 12 homes, and you can even go with the condos. I've got mm -hmm. nothing against them. If you put 16 condominiums in there, times four families, you can figure out the car traffic. You put 32 in there coming off West Norma Trail, 
you're talking about 128 cars just for the people that live there, not for their guests, not for their family. So to tell me there's less traffic congestion, that ain't going to fly. Now, as far as the snow removal, huge issue. You reduce the frontage, you, those condominiums take up more, again, more driveway space. And in between each condominium, there's what, nine feet allowed, 10 feet? So now you got 20 feet between the two, four, and that's actually where the mailboxes go. Where does the snow from the street go? Is the city going to take on added increase in cost to come out and haul this snow out in trucks? We live on the very edge of town. We live there, we move there, we knew it. It was going to blow in heavy snow. We've got hit hard the last two years. Mm -hmm. the, that snow has been, the last two years, pushed onto that vacant lot. Where, what's the city going to do with it? The water drainage also, when they built that condominium last fall, plugged a natural resource. It now r flows out onto the street north of that current condominium on the west side, and it floods everything down on 32nd Street and uh, the end of Norma Trail. So there are a lot of concerns. Uh, a lot of the neighborhood just found out about this last Thursday night. Uh, the voice of concern is immense. A lot of them couldn't make it tonight due to short notice. Yeah, I guess the uh, are you here to oppose Absolutely. the development of these? I'm, a, I'm here to oppose them moving the limit, moving those houses forward. This is a residential neighborhood. What they're trying to do is put in a complex that I've seen in Sioux Falls. <coughs> this Moving those houses forward reduces the parking mm -hmm. on that street. There is no place to park hardly now, even on my mm -hmm. side, this side. I think if they're going to build the condominiums, they need to have additional parking put in, come up with snow plan removal, just from the street itself, not even from the driveways, mm -hmm. and ad adhere to that flooding issue. Because yeah. it does go down there, and it floods 32nd, not six, eight inches. I'm talking a foot to foot and a half. Yeah, and, and uh, just, just so you know that the Planning Commission does not deal with snow removal or drainage. I know, but just land use issues. The land use issue, if approved, does bring into issues that the later the city is going to have to face. And, and once this plan, if approved, uh, is uh, submitted for permitting. Uh, as I understand it, that's when the engineers look at snow removal and water and things like that. The only issue here tonight is we have, as I understand it, a development that's approved for this type of development. Okay. Can they reduce the setback on the front and back from 25 to 20? It reduces the cost of our homes because you put more homes in there. You, it looks cluttered. I don't know if any of you want that. It makes a cluttered effect. The current condominium looks pretty nice if that's mm -hmm. at the current setback. But there's been question yeah. about that since it's been built. And if not, or if it is, then all those current condominiums would jot out in front of it. Mm -hmm. And again, parking, again, needs to be an issue as to that front access. Mm -hmm. Can a car park on that driveway and not block the sidewalk? I believe they can. The current condominium sitting there mm -hmm. hardly allows it. So I mean, that's just something you need to look they, at or hear. You know, they have to follow all of the other ordinances when they build these townhomes. The only difference would be the distance from the property line to the front face okay. or the back face of the <coughs> unit. Well, not all ordinances were followed because uh, no. I called City Hall when they started digging, and I said. I think they're a little close. Uh, Mr. Hartman really offended me when he called me back and he says, are you, are you sure you know what you're talking about? I said, I told Brad, I said, I've seen trenches before. I know what a backhoe looks like. He said, there are no building permits been issued for that. We did put a stop to it, mm -hmm. but nobody has ever come out and said that it's been, Mr. Hartman did come back and says, I did check, a surveyor did the job. Well, when I park my car in the driveway on the other side, mm -hmm. there is ample room, more than, to go in front and back. Mm -hmm. 
when I see the cars parked at the current condominium, it's tight. So yeah, I oppose the, and if they need more land, that fence on the back side, that's a cornfield. He can go buy 10 or 15 feet from that farmer and move it back if he needs additional land. Okay. Uh, just before you step okay. away, any questions for Doug? Okay. Guess not. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else tonight that wishes to address item number 10? Mr. Chair, I have a question for planning. Based on what I was reading here and from what you said is required parking is not allowed in the front yard setback? That's correct. And there's no parking and this will prevent on-street parking, so there will be no on-street parking either? Uh, it'd be tight. Like he said, there's 20 feet possibly between driveways, but that's where you put the mailboxes. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Any other questions for planning staff? Okay. Thank you, Steve. I don't think it's necessary, Damien, unless uh, somebody has a question for the petitioner. Okay. Uh, hearing uh, that we have no more questions, I'd entertain a motion for uh, approval of the item. Mr. Chair, I recommend approval of item number 10. Okay, we have a motion. Of discussion. A motion for approval. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I guess I feel that there is a legitimate concern raised by the neighbor um, for parking, and if there's no street parking for twin homes or whatever these units are, condos, um, that could be a problem down the road. Any other discussion? I'm just, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just curious about one thing that the opponent had uh, commented that he, they had just found out about this a week ago. Did I hear that correctly? We found out last Thursday. And how long has this been brewing? I mean, it's been in the works for more than just a week, I'm sure. Uh, we can have Steve come up, but I, I, I would guess that this followed the new guidelines for notification. Uh, they, signs were posted 10 days ahead of, of time. So if they didn't see the signs, letters of notification were sent out to property owners within 300 feet. Mm -hmm. Within what? 300 feet. And how long ago? Uh, that would have been two weeks ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, letters of notification are sent out on rezonings and major amendments, not minor amendments. So it was the posting of signs that would have been 10 days ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So there was no other? No other requirement, yeah. Uh, any other questions for Steve? Any other discussion? Then I would call the question. All those in favor of approving the minor amendment, item number 10, signify by saying yes. 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 Let's, uh, let's do a show of hands. All those in favor <laughs> signify by raising their hand. Okay, we have three, uh, four, and two against. All those, in, all those opposed raise their hand. Okay, three to two, item number 10 is approved. Thank you, Merida. Number 
12 has been deferred. We'll go to number 13. Conditional use permit in the C2 General Commercial District to allow a hotel on a non-arterial street at 2725 South Carolyn Avenue. David. Good evening again. Uh, the petitioner is Wendell Portrats and the owner is Tom's Family Trust. They've applied for a conditional use permit in order to construct an 80 unit four story hotel as at 2725 South Carolina Avenue. The area in size is 1.54 acres. Uh, the zoning is C2 and the compatibility ratings are five. It's surrounded by C2 zoning and other commercial uses except to the west which is Interstate 229 right of way. And so. Uh, Planning staff has ranked this as, as uh, about as compatible as it can be with surrounding land uses. Um, the conditional use permit standard for hotel motel is just that uh, they be located in areas where the traffic they generate can be adequately channeled. Design of these sites should try to minimize the impact of the parking area necessitated by the use. Um, as the standard for that is because uh, occasionally you'll, sign, you'll see collector streets that uh, do not that have some residential on them that their trip may be traffic concerns. This, in this case, it doesn't exist. This is an entirely commercial corridor and planning staff does not have any concerns about traffic impacts at this location. Um, as far as the conditional use plan, the setbacks and dimensions indicate that required setbacks have been met. The applicants have provided 85 parking stalls on site, which meets minimum standards. The landscaping plan appears to meet minimum standards as well. A specific schedule of species was not provided. However, we do advise against utilizing ash trees for minimum requirements. <clears throat> the signage plan was not provided, but the applicant is aware that they need to, that sign permits are issued separately and they should conform to the, and they must conform to the requirements of the sign ordinance for the C2 zone. A complete photometric plan will be required at the time of building permit review and trash and maintenance facilities are located in the northwest corner of the site. Those enclosures should be screened from interstate right of way utilizing fencing and landscaping. Um, as far as public agencies and infrastructure comments, uh, traffic engineering, their statement is that the applicant should be advised that Carolyn Avenue will become a right in right out only at its juncture with West 41st Street in the future. And the applicant should be contacting traffic engineering for further details. They do have plenty of opportunity to access the major arterials at Louise and 26th Street and some of those others as well. Uh, <clears throat> from the drainage engineers, the on-site detention of stormwater runoff will be required. Plans for that have not yet been approved by city engineering. As far as planning staff analysis, the applicants requesting to construct an 80 unit four story hotel at this location. At 59 and a half feet tall, the structure exceeds the maximum height regulations for the zoning district, but the Board of Adjustment granted a variance for the structure on July 19th of 2011. The applicant is also aware that this site is within the special flood hazard area as shown as on the DFIRM maps. A floodplain development permit is required and the applicant is working with city staff to ensure compliance for the issuance of that permit. The site will have fill added to raise the structure up about up out of the flood hazard area and this documentation has not yet been supplied but they are working on it. And specific building materials and colors were not provided. The submitted rendering shows several colors and materials being used to enhance the overall features of the hotel. The applicant should be prepared to address the colors and materials if that's an item of concern to the commissioners at the public hearing. And the collector and arterial street system allows for adequate traffic flow through the non-residential development and to this location. But because the application has provided clarity to indicate the location, nature, and extent of the work proposed and requires a complete plan check by zoning and building services prior to the obtaining a building permit, staff is recommending approval of the conditional use permit with two conditions. The first is that the floodplain development application and supporting documentation submitted prior to the building permits. And that and number two is that supplemental material showing the screening and landscaping of the trash mechanical enclosures is required as part of the building permit review. And that can well and just to let you know, we did receive one letter of concern uh, from adjacent property developers uh, about drainage, but drainage will be handled as far as um, on site detention and then those plans will have to be reviewed before the building permits issued anyway. And that concludes staff report. Would there be any questions of David? David. David just one question. Um, is there any concern about um, sound on, in that particular location? Because Not at this location, no. Okay. No, we haven't run into anything that would, that would um, cause the hotel to, to be concerned or surrounding property owners, I guess, to be concerned. David, in the concern about drainage, are you saying that as they go through the process here, one of the things they'll have to provide would be an engineer drainage? Yep. 
plan. The city staff, yep, to the public works department for review yep, and approval. So their drainage plan will have to be approved for on-site detention of stormwater flows. Okay, thank you, David. Yep. Any other questions, David? Thank you. Thank you. Would the petitioner be here? Good evening. My name is Wanda Potras, 405 South 3rd Avenue. I represent the owner developer, uh, TKO out of Aberdeen, South Dakota. Um, I heard some of the concerns here uh, this evening, Ken, and everybody. Um, right now, this, this project has kind of moved along quite rapidly. Uh, we actually put the land under contract approximately about a month ago. Uh, we already have the engineering drawings completed. To answer your question, Ken, the, the drainage issues and containment issues will be submitted to the city this week. So we have addressed the drainage problems. We've also addressed the floodplain. Um, it is true that we are raising the site out of the floodplain to conform. Um, this is in um, is actually preferred by the owner, the new owner. Uh, we also have. Um, the franchise itself is a Candlewood Suites, which is actually a Holiday Inn product. It's just one arm of their franchise. Um, the standard colors or, or the color boards have been, are in the process right now. I, I virtually have just started, I got the schematic design done, went through the height variance and things of that nature, received that. Um, it's just moving along quite rapidly because we hope to get in the ground yet this month to beat the winter construction. So I have, uh, if there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Would anyone have any questions for Wendell? Seeing none, thank you, Wendell. Yep. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address Item number uh, 13. Todd Menser, uh, representing the owners at 2801 South Carolyn. Uh, just, I guess the questions I would have would be for a unit of uh, that size, I, I heard him say something about 85 parking spots. Just wondering, is that average of what's needed for a unit of, of that many places for on-site parking? And then do you hear them talk about raising the level of the lot? Uh, you know, wondering how that's addressed, not only just to the drainage of the property, but how that's going to affect the water moving to the adjacent properties around there of you know, if there is a major rain, how that's go if that's going, I would think that that's going to raise the water level for the places around there. Just wondering how that's addressed. Thank you. Uh, would anyone have any questions or talk? Seeing none. Uh, David, who was presenting this one? You, David. His question in regards to 85 parking spots. Yeah, the standard for hotels is that they provide one parking stall per unit, per room and then five additional stalls per staff. And so they've, meet, they've met the, that minimum requirement. So they meet the standard as far as parking? Yep. yep. His other concern about drainage, is that something we should? It's not necessarily um, a purview of the Planning Commission. Um, the city engineers are going to require a standard for drainage that detains all stormwater. Um, and so that there would be no more flow off of the site as there was pre-development. And that's the standard that they are going to have to comply with and, and be approved. And however that's affected by what they plan to do to raise themselves up out of the floodplain is going to be their concern as they try and address those, that engineering standard. But that's not going to be waived. So. so in other words, if this is approved, Someone else is looking over this. Yep, the, it to will help be a major alleviate, consideration. Alleviate some of Todd's concern. Yep, it will be a major consideration as far as their grading and their building permits are concerned. So they need to get that approved before they'll be able to move. Question, and then, then that's for construction as well as for then the permanent site there, right? That's correct. Yep. Yep. Any other questions for David? 
Thank you, David. Thank you. Todd, did you have something else you needed to say? Uh, just Come on up to the mic. Uh, not necessarily concerned, just wondering if what commission would, you know, if everything's approved, uh, when it comes to approving the water stuff, which which unit or uh, addresses that for future, not our, you know, for our knowledge? It's not necessarily a public body that approves those plans. Not something akin to the planning commission. There isn't one. There isn't one like that. But the public engineers um, in the in the public works department are, are certainly willing to take any concerns um, over the phone or in person or by email. Um, so that's. David, would you be willing to get Todd's uh, yep. name and, and uh, phone number? I can certainly uh, give him the information, too, of, the, of our city engineer who handles that. So. And so if he had questions in regards to that, the engineer yep. department yep. with Windows Help could answer those questions. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. Wendell, I saw your hand go up. Come on up for a minute. <laughs> I guess I would also offer to anybody any concerns. I have actually seen the drainage plan. I actually did the final review on it today before it went to the city. All the water is contained in chambers underground in the parking lot area. Uh, the entire perimeter of the parking lot is collected by a storm drainage system, which is uh, going into Carolyn Avenue. It's all piped to Carolyn Avenue. The roof drainage, which it is a flat roof, is also piped into the stormwater containment areas. And this is being designed by Saren Associates. So just to assure you that that's what we're going to be submitting yet this week for their first review. Okay. Thank you, Wendell. Well, any other questions for Wendell, guys? Thank you, Wendell. Was there anyone else in the audience that wanted to, uh, to address this issue? If not, I'd look for commission action on item number uh, 13. I'll move for approval of item 13 with the two conditions that have been uh, recommended by staff, and those are that the floodplain development application and supporting documentation be submitted prior to getting building permits and that the supplemental material show the screening and landscaping of the trash mechanical enclosures as part of the building permit review. I have a motion. Would anyone care to second that? I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? <coughs> Motion uh, number 13 passes. Now move, move to number 14. 14 is a conditional use permit in the O office district to construct a daycare center at West 90th Street and South Louise Avenue. Steve. Now the applicant is Chad Van Buskirk, Van Buskirk Construction. Uh, property is also owner is also Kingswood Development Corporation. Uh, they're requesting approval of a daycare center use on the subject property zoned off O office, requiring a conditional use. It's about a five acre site. And it's located at the northwest corner of the intersection at West 90th Street and South Louise Avenue. Currently the site is vacant. Uh, there is residential development occurring to uh, the east of the property. The Shape Sioux Falls uh, designation is uh, Neighborhood Employment Center at West 85th Street and South Louise Avenue. So there'll be similar land uses at this location, at and around this location. As far as zoning goes, to the north it's ag still in the county. And to the south it's RD residential, residential uses. To the east, RD residential. And to the west, Platinum Valley PD, which is going to develop office and commercial similar uses. However, because of the proximity to the residential uses, we're giving it a compatibility rating of four, minor conflict potential that can be addressed through setbacks, landscaping, and design. A daycare center, uh, 
under the zoning ordinance requires consideration of a safe and healthy environment for the person being primarily important. The applicants shall remit their authorization from the city health department prior to conditional use permit approval. Uh, Snickle Fritz daycare is identified as the occupant of the building and the plan has been developed for them indicating uh, a floor plan, a site plan, parking, landscaping, and outdoor play areas. A safe and convenient drop-off is indicated at the front door with parking uh, sidewalk going to the parking spaces in front. Property is served by a driveway that comes from the <coughs> south and uh, is not being planted. It's going to be a lease area of the total site. So it's only a portion of the total site that we're looking at as far as the site plan development goes. The rest of the site is expected to develop with other buildings in the future uh, using the same point of access. Uh, they'd be sharing driveway, possibility of sharing parking, and other situations that we have seen as a planning commission in the past, uh, most recently at 85th and Western for a similar daycare situation. Uh, the developer uh, appears to have taken this as an approach to including multiple uses on a singular site. <coughs> Staff has pointed out to them a situation where they will have to be concerned about signage. Limited signage for one site uh, in an office district is quite limited, um, uh, but they are aware of that. Uh, emergency <coughs> services would like to have an addressing plan put together for multiple buildings on one site so they can find a building quickly as they enter into the property. Setbacks. Uh, are indicated for this 236 foot by 160 foot uh, site, including a 25 foot front yard setback on West 90th and a 16 foot side yard setback along the west east side of the property. 10 foot is required. The building fronts to the west, and uh, so that's where the main entrance and activity would be away from the residential uh, side. Also, the traffic is uh, indicated that direction. Staff noted that the parking lot to the north side that has the end facing the residential side will require screening. So they'll have to add screening there. There's not enough room really to put landscape screening in there, so staff is recommending a, a screen fence. <laughs> the applicant proposes to serve this and future building sites on the subject property. Uh, with future development plans uh, that won't necessarily come back to you for review, but uh, it, the consideration that we're giving to this one will probably set a precedent for a development of the rest of the site. Drainage <coughs> is a concern in this area, and the uh, applicant will have to continue to work with city engineer to ensure proper drainage design at this location. Because the application has provided clarity to indicate the location, nature, and extent of the work proposed and requires a complete plan check by building and uh, zoning services, prior to obtaining a building permit, staff recommends approval of the conditional use permit with two, con or excuse me, four conditions. The first one that treated as one lot for multiple building sites, the subject property requires seven trees to be planted in the front yard along West 90th Street and 13 trees in the front yard along South Louise Avenue. Secondly, treated as one lot for multiple building sites, the subject property is allowed two freestanding signs, one on each street frontage, each sign being no more than 48 square feet in size and six feet in height. Three, treated as one lot, a signage plan for addressing must be approached or approved by emergency service providers prior to building occupancy. And lastly, provide a five-foot-high wood screen fence at the east end of the north parking lot. Uh, that concludes staff report. We've had no calls on this. Thank you, Steve. Would there be any questions of Steve? Thank you, Steve. Is the petitioner here? Hello, Steve Van Buskirk, 5800 South Remington Place, Sioux Falls. Um, here, uh, I'm the applicant. Uh, not, I'd maybe answer questions, I guess. We had a neighborhood meeting. Uh, we had one person show up. We just need to 
you know, they just had a couple landscaping questions and just questions about the project in general. So no particular concerns. I don't know, the next door neighbor, Mary, she might be here tonight, I don't know. She couldn't make their initial meeting, I guess, but um, I don't know if there's any questions. I guess the only one thing I didn't uh, notice on the staff report was the wood fence, the specification of wood fence. We understand there's gotta be fencing there. You might treat that more as a suggestion rather than a requirement to wood, because we might prefer to have something like PVC, which we review is standing up a lot better than a wood fence, less maintenance. So other than that, I could take questions. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I knew you weren't Chad, so I, uh, I could. Would there be any questions for Steve? No questions, thank you. Would there be anyone else in the audience that would like to address number 14? Seeing none, I would look for commission action on item number 14. Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation for approval of item 14 with the following stipulations. But I'd like to change item number four of the stipulations to say to provide a five foot high wood or vinyl fence. All right. Would anyone care to second that motion? I'll second. We have a motion and a second uh, discussion. Seeing uh, no discussion, all in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Number 14 passes. Our next item is number 15, which is a final development plan in subarea G of the Dolly Farm Village Plan Development District to construct a large single-use retail building at 601 South Highland Place. Good evening again. Uh, this is petition number 2011-07-14. Uh, the applicant is requesting approval in order to construct a 136,000 square foot retail building in the Dolly Farm Village development. The location is at 601 Highline Place. The area of the site is uh, 14, just over 14 and a half acres, um, with the existing zoning being within subarea G of the Dolly Farm PD. Uh, the Shape Sioux Falls designation is as a regional employment center, so this is appropriate. Um, and abutting zoning and land uses are, are compatible as they are generally part of either the detention or additional retail areas of the Dolly Farm Village area. Um, so we consider the application compatible. The Dolly Farm Village PD was created by City Council Action in June of 2006 for multiple uses. Several minor boundary changes in the sub area have been completed since that time as specific parameters of tenants have been proposed. Specific site development plans within sub area G and F have been approved by the Planning Commission since the district's creation, uh, the results of which you can see out there right now. Uh, the applicable regulations and standards are noted within your staff report. Uh, the one that I did want to highlight was that a letter indicating approval to proceed under other regulations, which is number six, signed by the chairperson of the Dolly Farm Village Architectural Review Committee must accompany any submittal to the City Planning Commission. We did receive that letter today um, in your staff report later on. It notes that we hadn't received it at the drafting of the report, but we did receive that letter today. It is a conditional approval from the Dolly Farm Village Re um, Architectural Review Committee. So. Uh, there is an additional stipulation that I'll be reading into the record that staff is proposing to address uh, that conditional approval. Uh, as I noted, the location is at 601 si South Highline Place. Um, Highway 11 and Arrowhead Parkway are limited access ar arterials, and so access will come to the site specifically from the entrance points at those uh, major arterials and uh, along Hi South Highline Place. A proposed linear park will be created on the adjacent property to the west. Timelines for that completion have not yet been developed, and no schools exist within 600 feet of the subject property. Uh, as far as the final development plan, the applicants are showing um, just over 650 parking stalls located on site, and the building design and location. The building will be located in the west center portion of the lot with the parking lot to the north and east sides. The building facade is composed of precast pre concrete panels and Concrete masonry units uh, with different earth tones used as a primary color scheme and the applicant is here to be able to address any specific um, building materials that would be used on different uh, facades. The specific landscape guidelines including schedule of species has not yet been included. They are working with the local 
landscape design firm to uh, get that completed and then that will be provided to staff for review prior to the issuance of a building permit. And a specific sign plan was not included in this packet, but would but any signage for Sam's Club would need to conform to the master sign plan. Uh, photometrics of the site have not been included, but will be required to meet city ordinances, along with trash enclosures and any outdoor recycling or mechanical equipment will be required to be screened from public view utilizing fencing and landscaping. Uh, all utilities are available. The drainage plan is under review. And uh, the only note that traffic engineering is that the roundabout will be required to be constructed per the traffic impact study, which is the roundabout is down on uh, East 18th Street and South Highline Place, just south of the target. As traffic increases, there will be a trigger point at which that roundabout will need to be uh, constructed. Uh, as far as land use and comprehensive plan analysis, the proposed site plan and building plans are largely in conformance with the city's comprehensive plan. This area is noted as a regional employment center in the future land use map and intensive retailing is an allowed component of that designation. In addition, uh, the applicants have described on the site plans pedestrian pathways to ensure connectivity to other retailers and sites within the development. Uh, and I noted about the approval to proceed already and so I'll just get right to the recommendation. Uh, because the subject application conforms to both the 2035 Shape Sioux Falls Comprehensive Plan and the purpose and intent of the Dolly Farm Village Plan Development District, staff is recommending approval of the final development plan with the following conditions. The first is that a landscape plan to include the schedule and location of required landscaping shall be submitted to and approved by the planning director or designee prior to the issuance of a building permit. Number two is the site plan and building renderings are approved as presented. Any changes to the site plan will require approval by the planning director or designee. And number three, sign plans needed to need to be submitted in coordination with the master sign plan. And then um, as a result of the conditional approval from the Dolly Farm Village Architectural uh, Review Committee, staff is proposing this fourth condition, which will take care of uh, those, those outstanding items. Uh, and then that would be read into the record as all outstanding architectural review items. As noted in the letter addressed on August 3rd, 2011 from Dick Dempster, Chair of the Dolly Farm Village Architectural Review Committee, must be addressed in a new letter received by the planning office from said committee indicating items have been satisfactorily completed prior to the issuance of any building permits. I did want to note that we did receive some comments from residents in the Split Rock Height neighborhood and that was provided to us and they have, they're not here tonight, uh, but they have provided to us a, a quick slideshow. Should be right down at the bottom there. Um, it's not the beginning, if you could go up to the beginning, Steve. Yeah, uh, mostly what their concerns center around is just some of the, they do believe that the overall design is a very good fit with the other current occupants of the Dolly Farm Village and had a couple of suggestions. Um, you can go to the next page. Suggest three additional architectural features at entrance to add depth to appearance similar to other structures. Um, and those are the examples that they're talking about. And then you can go to the next slide. And those are examples that Sam's Club has done in other locations. And if you could go one more. And then their additional concern was that the north facing towards Highline Place auto service garage entrances, they suggested an alternate color of doors and substantial landscaping along Highline Place to block direct view of auto service area from Highline Place. And their master sign plan, they just want to make sure that the signage is in conformance with the already approved master sign plan, which it will need to be. Um, I do want to make a note of these concerns that were brought up by some of those neighbors are also concerns that were similarly shared by the Architectural Review Committee and will be addressed um, by that fourth condition. And so that those concerns should be taken care of by the plans as they're submitted in the future. So, and that concludes staff report. David, could you give us some history and explain to us what this architectural review committee is? This, I believe, um, and Jeff can correct me, I guess I wasn't here right when they created it, but I'll uh, try and get into it as much as I remember. At the creation of the Dolly Farm Village Plan Development District, the landowners of the property wanted to ensure that the development was of a higher quality. And so to, in order to do that, per the sub-area regulations that were developed, they formed an architectural review committee. Um, that, and so what that committee's responsibility is, is to review all of the architecture within the development in, a, in accordance with the Dolly family's wishes and uh, intent of what they were selling the land to do. And so. Uh, before the Planning Commission can move to approve any of the final development plans in this area, we are required to receive a letter from that Architectural Review Committee that is indicating approval to proceed. And so, and that was what was submitted to us today. 
It wasn't a city requirement. It was that not. Was something they took no, that was a that was an intent that the Dolly family wanted the development wanted to ensure the development was of a little higher standard than minimum city standards. So, thank you. Yep. Would there be any other questions for David? Seeing none. Thank you, David. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? Good evening. I'm Teresa Burgess with Bolton and Mink Engineering. I'm the civil engineer of record for this project. We also have Aisha Aurora here this evening. She's the architect of record. I believe David's covered everything. So if you have any questions for us, we'd be happy to answer, but we don't have any presentation this evening. Would anyone have any questions for Teresa? <coughs> Just a comment as an Eastside resident. I'm excited to see uh, these things getting built over there. So welcome. You know, we try not to put them in residential neighborhoods. No, I, so I, I live on the east side of Sioux Falls, and I'm excited to see the development well, you coming you are that excited way. to see it coming. I am okay. excited, I yes. thought you were asking if anybody ever is. No. Uh, <laughs> well, you somebody is, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it will fit real well with the development, and we do have the Walmart in the area, mm -hmm. so we already have a shopping demographic that's interested in seeing one. So. Absolutely. Thank you. Would there be anyone else in the audience that would like to address item number 15? Good evening. I'm Craig Lloyd, Lloyd Companies, uh, 3130 West 57th Street, Suite 112. Uh, we're excited to have uh, SAMS in the area. We're excited for not only the area, but Sioux Falls. It's good economic growth. The only uh, question I have for David is I missed something on here, sorry. But uh, the traffic, the roundabout to be constructed per traffic impact, and that was on the completion of that high line, not the completion of just the retail. And, okay, so we just want to make sure that we're not having to put that in at this time. Just wanted to say that. Thanks. Wait a minute, Craig. Would there be anybody here that have any questions of Craig? I can't believe you don't. You can sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Thanks. Anyone else in the audience that would like to address item 15? If not, I would look for commission action on item number 15. Mr. Chair, I'd make the uh, motion for approval of the final development plan, item 15, with the four stipulations. Second. We have a first uh, a motion and a second uh, discussion. Is it just me, or was David requesting a, an additional stipulation? Mm -hmm. yeah. That Pardon? was the fourth one. That was the fourth one? Yeah. Any other discussion? Mr. Chair, I'm Any? just uh, excited too about this opportunity to continue the growth and development of East Side because I think it'll not only help uh, those residents out there for convenience, but it'll somewhat take away some of the traffic congestion that we have going out to the other side. I think it might help balance that quite a bit. I agree. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor, I'll signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Number 15 passes. Number 16 is a minor amendment to subarea A of Brooks Crossing Plan Development District to increase density to one for 2,475 square feet and remove provisions A and D from other regulations of the Plan Development District regulations at East 54th Street and South Sycamore Avenue. David. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the applicant is proposing the amendment to the subway regulations in order to begin planning construction of a 12-building, 253-unit apartment complex. The site overall is about 16 acres in size, and we do have abutting zoning and land uses. To the north is RS2 Residential, which is developing single family, which we've assigned a rating of three. To the south um, is C4 and subarea B, which is vacant and uh, potentially commercial areas in the C4, and then apartments and townhomes. 
To the east is the RD residential, which is vacant, and to the west is the C4 plant commercial, which is vacant. All of those were given compatibility ratings of four. Uh, the Brooks Crossing Plan Development District was created by City Council Action in February 2008 to allow commercial office and multifamily residential land uses. Final development plans were approved by the Planning Commission in August 2008 and January 2009 to construct apartments in a townhome community, and those have been largely completed out there if you go out to the site. The applicable regulations and standards um, that are noted in your staff report with a couple of changes that were underlined, and these are the changes that they're requesting. I'll use under density area yard and height regulations that density is going to change to one unit allowed per 2,475 square feet of area. Uh, and then the, the other uh, changes were that under other regulations, which is item six, is that uh, item A, residential structures will contain no more than four dwelling units. And item D, a minimum of two enclosed parking spaces will be provided per dwelling unit also be struck. Um, so getting into the site description, the existing corridor development pattern, South Sycamore is a limited access arterial. East 54th Street is a uh, minor collector, and then which would link to both South Sycamore Avenue as the arterial and then a major collector in, in South Dubuque Avenue at, in, after eventual development takes place. Uh, public agencies and infrastructure comments, traffic engineering has indicated that a deceleration lane may be required on Sycamore Avenue and they need to contact engineering to do some traffic studies. Um, both water and sanitary sewer are available and as far as the drainage goes that is also going to be reviewed by city engineering at the standard that's, that we've already discussed tonight. Initial plans by the applicant indicate that the, pro that the proposed complex will consist of 12 buildings with a total of 253 units. Parking and density calculations are less than a 5% difference from what the original regulations required, as shown in the chart below. As far as the density, it's a 1% difference from what the minimum requirement was, and as far as parking, it's a 2% difference. And those are well within the parameters of being able to grant a minor amendment. Uh, the most significant request is to remove the requirement in the other regulations portion of the sub-area regulations to limit building to no more than four dwelling units. That provision was initially created by the applicant in conjunction with the developers of the single-family residential to the north. The current applicant has discussed this proposal with the development company of the property to the north and has told the staff has received a favorable response. Staff notes that the buffer to the north is indicated on the concept plan submitted for this application and final details of that buffer will be presented at the time of the final development plan submitted to the Planning Commission. Um, and the recommendation is because the subject application conforms to the Shape Sioux Falls 2035 comprehensive plan and will require final development plans to be approved prior to obtaining a building permit Staff is recommending approval of that minor amendment. Um, and we are aware that the applicant has discussed the plans with the property owner of the north, which is Har and Lemmy, and they uh, are working out some details, but in general, the, the property owner is, is willing to go along with the plans as currently presented. And that concludes staff report. We've received no other calls on this item. David, thank you. Would there be any questions for David? Seeing none, thank you, David. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? Good evening. I'm Lanny Oranger with Innovative Design, 3800 West Technology Circle. Um, in regards to the minor amendment to the for this uh, development, uh, we did, we acknowledged that there was potentially a concern with the neighbors to the north. Um, so we did hand deliver invitations for a neighborhood meeting, held the neighborhood meeting, had several follow-up conversations with some of the neighbors, et cetera, um, and at this time are not aware of anybody that has any oppositions to the minor amendments for the project. Um, there's new owners for the property. Times have changed from why it was originally zoned, and so that's the, the reason for asking for the minor amendments so that we can get into a position where it's ready to start some development. Would anyone have any questions for, uh, was it Lani? Lani. Lani. Any questions for Lani? You're in good shape, Lani. Thank you. Is there anyone else here in the audience uh, that wishes to address item number 16? If not, I would look for commission action on item 16. I'll move for approval. I have a motion to, for approval. Which, is there a second? 
I'll second that. A motion and a second. Would there be any further discussion? All in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Number 16 passes. There being no further business on the agenda, on the agenda uh, I would entertain a motion for adjournment. Mr. Chair, make a, rec make, make a recommendation for adjournment. Is there a second? Second. All in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Motion passes.